now we're chit-chatting with Carl. Hi, Carl. He's telling us about his um, experience what, with the IRS. Hello? Yes, I'm going Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'm myself, but yeah, I'm just coming out, of, yeah, I'm coming out of Evansville, so I went and talked to this man's probation officer because he had an ankle bracelet on. And uh, then we went and talked to the uh, federal pos- uh, public defender for him. And uh, she said that this man, she's known for two years, and uh, she thought the guy was conning him because she said, man, you made a 180 degree turn in your filings and your paperwork. She said, you know, who's this man sitting next to you? She said, he said, that's Carl Lapp. And it's like, uh, she thought I was like a free man in Montana, so she was really, really nervous. When we first got there, she was like shaking her legs real bad. And then after about, uh, about, after about an hour, she said, wow, you're a really nice man, and I apologize the way I treated you when you first walked in. And uh, I see that you've uh, calmed this man down, and uh, he seems to be really happy, and his wife, you know, you know, everybody seems to be uh, getting along better because uh, he was doing all this... Uh, crazy paper filing and uh, this rock class stuff and uh, that's what the lady said she said are you a sovereign citizen she said to me I said oh no ma'am I said uh, I'm trying to calm these people down you're showing how to get in and out of here so quick it's not even fun so I said to her uh, so we were told about four felonies he had and right off the bat I, I read the case against him and uh, you know he paid the good money come down here and I there's 31 pages so I got to just past the first page, I got to the fourth line. It says, to income taxes due and owing. So I stopped, and I started looking through the bill for the fill of the papers. And I went through the 31 pages real quick, the rest of the pages, and I didn't see anything. So I stopped on page 27, and I thought, maybe there's an impact statement there. It's like, there wasn't even an impact statement. And I got up off his uh, dining room table, and I left. I said, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going back to the motel, I'm done. He said, what? He said, they got a paper case. He said, a paper case. I said, there's no one here going to testify. They got no bill, no bill of particulars. I said, no impact statement. You're done. I said, there's a paper case. I said, when we can we talk to your attorney? He said, Wednesday. So that was Monday. So I drove him around for a couple hundred miles, and I explained life to him a little bit, and uh, we went to talk to his lawyer. And his lawyer backed me up everything I said. He said, yep, you got to confess on yourself. And uh, the IRS does not know that money in that account is all income. It could be, I said, it could be a gift, right? He said, yes, there could be a portion of the gift, right? And I said, if the IRS makes one penny mistake, they just committed for it, right? She said, well, yes. So she said, and what we're waiting for you to do is admit that you did wrong. As soon as you admit that you did wrong, we can go across the street, we'll sign a, like a guilty plea, we'll start your uh, sentencing process. And she said, I'll call if you want to, you can come in for sentencing and explain why this man was so, uh, uh, doing like a, you know, what they call a paper terrorism why she filed so many papers and why they had those four uh, criminal charges on them, like threatening the court, threatening the United States. I said, ah, that won't be necessary. I said, this man is general as a lamb now. <laughs> I said, I came here to make sure he didn't have, like, no, uh, a cache of weapons or uh, uh, stock food, uh, you know, on his house. He didn't have landmines. No, I said, he's got three kids, two dogs, a couple of cats, a parrot. He's a normal, nice guy. He's just a good old boy. He's got a... Uh, smoking a band of Trans Am that he's had for 30 years. I said, he ain't got hurt, hurt nobody. I said, they need to take this ankle bracelet off, man. This is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And then I told them, I said, uh, we're going to, obviously, we're going to press our claim that they filed a false claim against this man. And she said, oh, they're immune. I said, yeah, the IRS agent is immune, and the judge is immune, and the IRS investigator is immune, but not Susie, and not Bobby, and not little Billy. And now Joey, she's like, oh, this is the people that are uh, under the cloak of color law. I said, those people actually signed their names and destroyed this man's life. They are liable to another man. But she's like, oh. <laughs> it's for you. Oh, yeah. And so fun. impacts, you empower people. That's a, good, that's a good thing. Oh, yeah. So she actually asked me, she said, do you want to go to, uh, she's like, well, let me see, the last... Uh, convention we had for public defenders was in Atlanta. She said, let me find out where the next city's going to be this year. And she's like, uh, you really need to talk to the public defenders and explain, like, what's going on out here. Because she said, we see guys like him all the time. And the feds want to nail guys like him up in the jail for years. And uh, honestly, uh, what's getting these guys all wound up 
And I said, well, they're desperate, they lost their job, or lost their house, and so they have outreach for YouTube or Internet radio. And they listen to some real crazy stuff out there. <laughs> and they get really desperate. And uh, as he said, right, he says, no, I've been a call. I really appreciate the banks because I know now that if I couldn't pay my loan, I could have made an offer for them of $10 a week or $100 a month. And we could have negotiated some sort of settlement instead of not paying anything on it and letting them foreclose on me. He says, I should have made them an offer instead of just ignoring their letters. I said to her, I said, that's all I'm trying to do is get people to understand you just have to write letters back and forth and keep the line of communications open because there's another man I'm working with in Chicago and uh, he's getting letters from the Attorney General within a day. He's responding back. He says, wow, Paul, for years, I always got, did this rebutted the presumption and they, everything went unrebutted, so it's standard is true. He said, I never got a response from the Secretary of State. He says, man, as soon as I write him, he writes me right back within a day. Boom. He says, I get a letter right back. And I said, do you notice how he ends his letter? He says, yours truly. So what he's saying, he's truly yours. It's not a he does He's not in love with you, Secretary of State. He's saying he is truly yours. He's yours truly. He's saying he is the servant and you are the master. And he said, call me anytime that you need to, to answer any questions from me. I'll answer anything you have. And uh, he explained every minute detail of his DUI, of why he's in petition, of why he's taken to court, why it's not a court, why it's not a trial, and why it's an administrative hearing. So the Secretary of State is explaining to him in minute details, like what I do with you guys. So now just getting confirmation from the Secretary of State of Illinois. So these people just don't think it's my crazy belief. <laughs> you know, so of course it's crazy. They're not that nice. So I said, oh, yes, they are. If you know how to hold talk on, to them. Hold, hold on a second, Carl. Um, Joe, if you're on the call, press star eight. I don't know. I can't see you as, I can't see you on here as Joe, so. It's, uh, we're 12 minutes into the call. He said he was going to be on it five minutes into the call. So if you're on here, press star eight and I'll unmute you. Otherwise, call, go right ahead. All right, I'm just sitting bumper to bumper traffic on I-70 going east of Indianapolis. So <laughs> mm. I'm able to talk to you folks. How's the weather over there? Nice, nice. It's uh, 80 and uh, sunshine and uh, it really calmed down. It was extremely hot this past week, but, uh, it's nice. The, 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 the L.A. calmed down, too, right? Well, it looks like it's going to rain any minute. It's so overcast right now or cloudy. I can't. It's like monsoon weather where we're having here. Oh, you get that in August. Yeah, you get that. Yeah, it is almost August. That's right. Yeah, yeah well, we've had it since June. It's been sweat, you know, hot, humid. I don't know, like. Right. Oh, yeah. Vegas is nice because it's dry. Phoenix is blue yeah. because it's But, uh, well, like I said, it's going pretty quiet here. And uh, I showed, oh, I did some videos. You did? Yeah. yeah. Somebody, they, another group of people asked me to go to Northern Indiana, so I'm heading back to now. And uh, I did like uh, three days worth of videos. You know how like those Winston, oh, they, these guys brought Winston Shroud in a couple of years ago. And they did some videos with Winston. Mm -hmm. So uh, these guys, these guys really like my stuff. They said, yeah, Winston tells great stories and he tells a lot of history, but he doesn't tell anybody how to any solve anything. So I said to the guys, okay, fine. You give me the problem, I'll give you the solution. So they just kept throwing problems out of me for like three days straight. I just kept drawing the solution. So you know, you know, you that. And one guy said, well, we know Carl's real because he doesn't redact anything. Like all of his paperwork, nothing is blacked out. So everything that he says, he says he has no problem. I even wrote my social security number on the bullet for everybody at the video. <laughs> I said, it's not my number. I said, social security uh, is, is the, you know, IRS's number, it's not mine. They just tell, they just had to give it to me. And I said, and I, if I choose to use it, I use it. If not, I said, it's not my number. I said, you want to know my number? Here it is. I put it on a report. <laughs> I said, it ain't mine. Hmm. I said, it's bad. I said, so how could they hold me liable for something that is not mine? I don't blame so these guys are yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it, like I said, it's fun. I did three days worth of videos, and the people were looking, I showed them how to set up their own <coughs> you guys doing their own common law court back in the 80s and the 90s. So, and they were going nowhere. And they tried to arrest the uh, governor <laughs> back in the 90s. So, a lot of them went to jail. <laughs> so, uh, 
So uh, I said, look, guys, I'm just, I'm just here to cock it down. I said, you want to know how to use a public building? This is how you make a claim to use a public building. I said, make a claim from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock on Friday afternoon, and then you want to access a court room, the building, and then you want to have uh, common law matters addressed between, like, say, 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock on Fridays because it's basically closed anyway. Mm. But you know what, bring uh, I think our guest speaker has arrived. Joe, are you uh, with us? Yeah, I'm, on, I'm just looking over some of the, the links here. Oh, okay. Well, let me let the call finish up, and then you'll come on, okay? Sure. Oh, I want to hear this guy. Yeah, I would love to hear this guy, because uh, somebody said that he was pretty good last week. Some lady called me. Oh, some lady. Remember that lady? She was getting a, she was making $100,000 with General Motors last year, and she was getting, she was coming home with 995 She sent me her IRS returns for the last three years. She was coming home with 19 to $20 a week out of a $2,000 paycheck. So I showed her how to, how to amend her W-4, and she's got her paycheck restored. Oh, thank God. Oh, awesome. Yep. So, see, there you go. And she, and she did something wacky. She says, and I don't want to be paid with real money. It's so great. <laughs> I said, you know what? Forget it, lady. As long as they gave you your paycheck back, that's all that matters. Well, Joe, this is Carl. Carl, this is Joe. Hey. Hey, Carl, how are you doing? Hey, you right. Yeah, then somebody said that you were pretty good. Some lady called me up and she thought you were pretty good. So I said, hey, let me listen in. Well, good. I'm glad Thank you that. made it. Thank um, you. So uh, <clears throat> I want to jump let right me, in. Let, let me introduce you first. Everybody, our, our special guest speaker has arrived. And he wants to be introduced as Joe Alvarez. And I posted some of his stuff on the website. So if you go to myprivateaudio.com, go to the guest speakers page and click on his name, Joe. You can see some of this stuff there, and the rest will be coming. Um, hi, Joe. Glad you could make it. Thank you so much. Hi, Angela. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. Um, I'm trying to get um, access to so that I could post some links for you guys. Okay. <clears throat> but I don't have, uh, I can't uh, just click in here to sign in, but it's not letting me. <clears throat> so I was wondering but, if you um, could let me. On the talk sheet chat, you mean? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, here, let me unmute you. Hold on a second. That might help. Say that again? Let me unmute you. That might help. Oh, okay. There so, you go. Oh, there you go. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're coming in as a guest. Oh. Thank you. Well, you know, I, um, I'm not very good at... I'm like Howard, you know, <laughs> with the computers. I don't give them much... Uh, I don't give them much patience. No, but it's just that, you know, for signing up, I do have some kind of talk shoe um, account, but it's just, I don't use it, so it's just, that's why I came in like that. So, okay, so um, what's this link you put in here, justice.gov? Right here, this is the Department of Justice website. So, uh, I just wanted, like, to just right jump into it and mention, like, Carl was talking about the common law. And last week on the on the call, <clears throat> I mentioned the common law is codified and is within the, you know, just in the civil code. And uh, if you go over here to the uh, website that I just posted, at the very, very top of the header, it says, the common law is the will of mankind issuing from the life of the people. So they're putting it up there that the common law is the will of mankind. That is what you guys are asking for right here. But it also says it's the will of mankind. And if you don't have a will, then how are they going to know that that's your will? So one of the things that I'll be posting up is the will over here for California that the bar expects you to file into your paperwork. You could file your own, of course, but this is, you could say, a statutory will. So one thing that I wanted to mention to folks is, you know, I, I, I don't know if um, <clears throat> you got the uh, memo or anybody put out a memo, but I was going to talk about the airship tonight, basically yes. how you get your airship. And that's truly what you're seeking. You have an airship, but no one has given you a will where it says that. A lot of folks, you know, they, they pass away and they think, well, I don't have anything, so I'm just going to give this to that person, that person, that person and I just have bills to pay. And then, you know, if they don't leave a will, then the, the, the estate automatically goes into probate. It's, um, 
summary probate, that's what they call it. So what happens is uh, we are right now, every time we go into court, experiencing summary probate against our estate. And again, like I spoke last time, we're the wards of that estate. So what they have done is they've created an estate for us and then they immediately declare us dead. But at the same time, they give us the paperwork so that we could go ahead and administer the estate. And uh, <clears throat> to, to be able to really, you could say, obtain your estate the way you're supposed to, you're supposed to register with the Secretary of State. And there's a form that you do, that you used to do that, that she has available. And I'm gonna try to get that. I'm sorry I didn't even think about posting that form up. And or otherwise I would have, um, I would have had it ready. But I'll get that for you, Angela. It's mostly, you know, like I said last time, most of the stuff I got is for out here in California. So if you'd like to move out here, we could help you real quick. <laughs> but otherwise, um, you know, we're gonna have to do a little digging, but it's in there, you know. Anyways, I just want to mention and start with that is the will. The will is, folks, you need to do your will. And I'm not going to tell you all the um, different results of the will, but let's just say that right here in the Department of Justice, who is the debt collector for this uh, Department of Treasury. And uh, if some of you went to the link, I'm hoping that uh, some of the stuff is out there, that that's what they are. I'm looking at it right now. This California statutory will, California probate code. Yeah. Now, at the very top of the wheel right there, at the very top, one of the first things it says, this is my will. I revoke all prior wills and codicils. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, once you do this right here, whatever the heck they have over there, pretending that they own your estate, this cancels it out because you are saying, and you don't have to use this will. But what I'm trying to tell you is that whatever you do when you're when you're doing your will you must have that you must have that statement on your paperwork <clears throat> this is my will i revoke all prior wills and coded bills so that birth certificate automatically that you could say is an inheritance that somebody left it's a piece of paper that the birth certificate folks is 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 an um, indenture certificate it's a certificate that basically proves that there's a liability to you. And that certificate is used, um, they they issue, you know, like you guys know, they issue notes against it. But um, <clears throat> that is um, it's a, it's a voting stock certificate. You are partial owners of this franchise, this corporation called the United States. And you would say technically it's a franchise of the United Nations. <clears throat> but you're partial owner of this corporation and that's why the, one of the representatives out here in California, he, he said it straight out. You know, Obama is the CEO of this corporation we call the United States. So that's kind of disclosure, folks, even though they're trying to like put it as a yay or a nay. But that's disclosure. Just like the paperwork that I'm showing you and the statutes that I'm showing you, <clears throat> they're giving you disclosure. If you see some of the stuff that I've seen in the code, it's bad. If you don't know the code, they could give you they could give you organic therapy out here in California. And organic therapy, basically, that means they get to go and rip your mind out and shock you and all these things. And since they have assumed power of attorney, they get to do that. And, you know, they'll lie on the paperwork and, you know, they'll forge your signature, whatever they need to. So that's why it's important that you have a will and a living trust because these are the only people that would be authorized to give you any such therapy. Anyhow, um, the airship, folks, the airship is that certificate right there. I mean, well, <clears throat> you could say that is part of the certificate. That, that, is, that is an asset of what is called your trust corpus. And your trust corpus really is you. You are ultimately your trust corpus. You are the estate, ultimately. If you had nothing...